Yes, folks, uh, today I want to talk about two things, and the first being how quickly and easily the left will cannibalize their own, how quickly they'll cannibalize anyone who strays away from their groupthink orthodoxy, and in this case, John Cleese. And I also want to talk about how John Cleese cannibalizes himself through his own hypocrisy. Now, John Cleese is a fantastic comedian, but politically he's all over the map. He agrees with Trump on most issues, yet he hates him. And, and he hates the EU, yet loves the United Nations. So anyway, today we'll start this off with uh, what's got the left's knickers in a twist. Now this is a tweet from John Cleese. Some years ago I opined that London was not really an English city anymore. Since then, virtually all my friends from abroad have confirmed my observation. So there must be some truth in it. I note also that London was the UK city that voted most strongly to remain in the EU. So folks, it's this word English that's got their knickers in a twist. They don't like uh, him, uh, John Cleese calling, saying that London was not an, really an English city anymore. And that baffles me because it's not an English city anymore. Less than 45% of people who live there consider themselves to be white. And 40% were born overseas, so it's clearly not an English city anymore. So anyway, we'll get, now go and list, uh, listen to uh, or see what else John Cleese has said. I mean, I love having different cultures around, but when the parent culture kind of dissipates, you're left thinking, well, what's going on? Well, obviously you have to ask what's going on. He came out with another tweet last night in which he said, I think it's legitimate to prefer one culture to another. For example, I prefer cultures that do not tolerate female genital mutilation. Again, some cultures are better than others. That's the point he's making. He went on to say, will this be considered racist by all those who hover, eagerly hoping that someone will offend them on someone else's behalf naturally? So you can clearly see uh, with this female genital mutilation stuff that he's opposed to Muslims and he's opposed to Muslim immigration. So who else is opposed to Muslim immigration? Oh yes, Donald Trump. And of course that was the point. Virtually all of the people publicly who came out and condemned him were rich, white celebrities living in the whitest areas of London. So now let's listen to what Cleese has to say about the media. So you're leaving us? Is oh, yeah, true? well, I'm, I'm going to buzz off in, in November because I've, I'm fed up with the corruption in this country, and in particular with just how awful the newspapers are and how the way, the way in which they censor news, make sure that people in England don't know certain things. In and who else hates the media? Hates the fake news? Donald Trump. Now let's listen to what he has to say about Brexit. And one of the disappointing things about England is that the, uh, the two sides are so entrenched and are really just rude about the other side. And I, I say to everyone, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. Don't tell me that I'm a bad person because I advocated at one point. I said I would vote for Brexit because I'm fed up with uh, the European Commission. Yes, yeah, so it's clearly obvious he's opposed. He's he's a, a pro Brexit guy. So I wonder why he is so opposed to Trump, because Trump wants pretty much exactly what Brexiteers want. To answer that question, folks, let's start with Hillary Clinton. Be grossly generalistic. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. Now let's listen to similar language coming from Cleese. 
Good thing. But you're moving to close to the estates and where yeah. a lot of your work is, but of course they have quite quite an interesting leader over there as well. Do, would you think that the political, <laughs> the political situation, does that appeal to you more over there, John? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't go to America at the moment if the place is stark staring mad. I mean, the first time that Trump has ever spoken to um, an intelligent audience. So the first time Trump has spoken to an intelligent audience. So he's saying, he's basically calling them a basket of deplorables that wasn't dependent on his patronage was at the United Nations General Assembly two or three days ago when they laughed at him. That's the first time he's ever spoken to an intelligent audience. He, so, so he's calling the United Nations a, an intelligent audience. Ah. Uh, Yes, folks, as I said before, John Cleese is a fantastic comedian. But at the end of the day, he's just another UN-supporting left-wing elitist. <laughs>